The learning objective of the topic is based on the relationship between Lewis diagrams, Vesper theory, bond orders and bond polarities, explain structural properties of molecules, explain electron properties of molecules. So in the first part, we did that from the Vesper theory, how can we predict the geometry of the molecule? In this part, we will be seeing that how the electrons are distributed, which leads to the particular geometry of the molecule. So let's start. Hello everyone, this is topic 2.7, Vesper and bond hybridization. This is taken from AP Chemistry College Board and this is part 2 of the topic. First of all, let me give you a small recap of the shapes of the atomic orbitals. So basically, atomic orbital is the region around the nucleus where there is a probability of finding the electrons. Atomic orbitals are of four types which we have studied, S, P, D and F orbitals. Here, we'll be only dealing with S and P orbitals. So S orbital is spherical in shape. And the P orbitals are dumbbell shape where the center point is actually the nucleus where there is no probability of finding the electrons. And these two regions are the place where the electrons can be found. So P orbitals are of three types Px, Py and Pz. The Px orbital is aligned along the x axis. The Py orbital is along the y axis and Pz orbital is along the z axis. So we already know what is a covalent bond. Covalent bond is formed by the sharing of the electrons between the two atoms. So covalent bond is basically of two types, sigma bond and pi bond. The type of this covalent bond basically depends upon the type of overlapping. Sigma bond is formed by the axial overlapping between the half-filled atomic orbitals. And this type of axial overlap is of three types. First is SS overlap, second is SP overlap and the third is PP overlap. First of all, let's see what does this SS overlap mean. SS overlap means the overlapping between the two S orbitals. For example, in hydrogen molecule. So hydrogen molecule is formed by the covalent bond between the two hydrogen atoms. And the hydrogen atom has one electron in the 1s orbital. When the two hydrogen atoms come close to each other, then the overlapping between these two s orbitals takes place and leads to the formation of hydrogen molecule. So this was about the s, s overlap. Next is the sp overlap. sp overlap means when there is an overlapping between the s orbital and the p orbital. Let's see an example of HF molecule where the s orbital of hydrogen overlaps with the p orbital of fluorine. So when they both overlap, this leads to the formation of this type of orbital. Third type of overlapping is pp overlap. So PP overlap means there is an overlapping between P orbital of one atom with the P orbital of second atom. So this is head on overlap. For example, in fluorine molecule, when two fluorine atoms come close to each other, they overlap like this. And this leads to the covalent bonding between the two atoms. The second type of overlap is pi bond. This is formed by the sidewise overlapping between the orbitals. This is formed between the two p orbitals. When they come close to each other and there is sidewise overlapping between them, and the a pi bond is formed. The lobes are actually above and below the plane. And that is why after the overlapping, there are two saucer type of charge clouds above and below the plane. So when there is a single bond between the two atoms, it means that there is one sigma bond. When there is a double bond between the two atoms, it means there is one sigma bond and there is one pi bond. And when there is one triple bond between the two atoms, it means that it has one sigma bond and two pi bonds. But the sigma bond is stronger than the pi bond. So here we are considering the p orbitals because both the sigma and pi bond can be found in the overlapping of p orbitals. So the sigma bond is due to the axial overlapping. When there is an axial overlapping between the two p orbitals, then between these two nucleus, you can see that there is a region where the electrons are present. And due to this, there is less internuclear repulsion. 
which makes it more stable. While in the case of pi bond, there is sideways overlapping or you can say lateral overlapping. Due to this, both the nucleus are very much close to each other and that is why there is more internuclear repulsion, which makes it less stable. This is the reason for strength of the sigma bond. Now we know that when the molecules are formed, they have a particular geometry according to Vesper theory. But why does that geometry happen? It can be explained with the hybridization. Hybridization is the process of intermixing of orbitals of slightly different energies so as to redistribute their energies resulting in the formation of new set of orbitals of equivalent energies and shapes. So what does this definition actually mean? This can be explained with the help of an example which I have taken as carbon. Electronic configuration of carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Here I have not shown 1s2 orbital. So 2s orbital has a lesser energy than the 2p orbital. So when the electrons are arranged for the carbon atom, it has two electrons in the 2s orbital and the two electrons goes to the 2p orbital. When the hybridization takes place in this atom, what happens is all the orbitals come on the same energy level and the electrons they redistribute themselves like this that each orbital is getting one electron. So here all S as well as all the P electrons are involved that is why this is called as sp3 hybridized carbon. So as the 2s and 2p orbitals are not very much different in their energies that is why they intermix themselves and gives rise to hybridized orbitals. First of all let's see for the sp hybridization. So sp hybridization means there is one s orbital involved and there is one p orbital involved. This is the simplest type of hybridization and the bond angle here is 180 degree. The geometry is linear. Here you can see that s orbital which is spherical in shape is combining with the p orbital which has a dumbbell shape. So when the hybridization happens the shape of both the orbitals become like this. Now when these two orbitals they combine they give rise to a linear geometry and the bond angle is 180 degree as you can see here. Let's see examples for sp hybridization. It can be found in BEF2, BECL2, BEH2, HC triple bond, CH it means ethyne, CO2 etc. So here I have taken the example of BECL2. The beryllium has an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2. So when the electron goes to 2p orbital and the hybridization takes place, the S and P orbitals they come at the same energy level and it is left with two empty 2p orbitals. So when 2s orbital and 2p orbital they combine the shape of the orbitals become like this and when they both combine with each other and leads to hybridization the BE hybridized orbitals look like this. Now these BE SP hybridized orbitals would combine with the P orbitals of chlorine atom and gives rise to linear geometry which has a bond angle of 180 degrees. Now let's see for the sp2 hybridization. So sp2 hybridization means there is one s orbital involved and there are two p orbitals involved here. As you can see here that there is one 2p orbital which is not included in here. So when these three orbitals combine they give rise to sp2 hybridized orbitals and the orbital shape look like this. So this is the trigonal planar geometry and the bond angle is 120 degree. The examples of sp2 hybridization are BF3, BCL3, BH3, H2, C double bond CH2, SO2 etc. So this molecule is ethene. Here I have taken the example of BF3 where borone has an electronic configuration of 2s2, 2p1. So when one of the electron from 2s orbital goes to 2p orbital, it leads to the hybridization which is sp2 hybridization. 
So when this sp2 hybridized orbitals they combine with p orbital of fluorine they give rise to bf3 and you can see here that boron is also left with one vacant p orbital. As there is a covalent bonding between the boron and fluorine that is why one of the electron from fluorine can be seen here. The third type of hybridization is sp3 hybridization. So sp3 means one s orbital is involved and all the p orbitals are involved. So when the hybridization takes place the shape of the hybridized orbital looks like this and when they all combine they gives rise to tetrahedral geometry as you can see here. The bond angle between the orbital is 109 degree and the geometry is tetrahedral. The examples of sp3 hybridization are methane, CCl4, SiCl4, ammonia, ethane, water etc. So here again I am giving you the example of carbon where the carbon has an electronic configuration of 2s2, 2p2. After hybridization it becomes sp3 hybridized carbon and all these sp3 hybridized carbon orbitals would combine with the 1s orbital of hydrogen and it gives rise to methane. Now from the Vesper theory we already know that when the number of electron pairs are 2 involved for a molecule then the bond angle is 180 degree and the basic geometry is linear. So here we can just remember further that when the number of electron pairs are 2 then the hybridization is sp and when the number of electron pairs is 3 then the hybridization is sp2 and the bond angle is 120 degree and the geometry is trigonal planar. When the number of electron pairs is 4 then the hybridization is sp3 and the bond angle is 109.5 degree. The basic geometry is tetrahedral. Notice one thing here that when the number of electron pairs are 2 then the 2 orbitals are involved. When the number of electron pairs are 3 then the 3 orbitals are involved and when the number of electron pairs are 4 then the 4 orbitals are involved. So you don't have to remember that what type of hybridization goes with what number of electron pairs you can just correlate it with the number of electron pairs. The learning objective of the topic was based on the relationship between the Lewis diagrams, Vesper theory, bond orders and bond polarities, explain structural properties of molecules and explain electron properties of molecules. So in the part 1 I discussed that from the Vesper theory and the Lewis diagrams how can we predict the geometry of the molecule and further in this part I discussed that how the electrons are distributed and how it gives rise to hybridization of the molecule and geometry. Please like and subscribe to the channel Log Iota and press the bell icon 